cover. Likewise, if Thompson is getting a down the left-hand side and getting into good positions, Buchan is going to have to tuck in on the other side. Well, two clubs here who, in their own way, have been totally transformed this season. Martin O'Neill has had a truly amazing effect on Celtic. But you have to admire, too, what Alex Smith has done at Dundee United. They may still be fighting for survival. But make no mistake, they've come a long way since he stamped his mark on the club. Celtic are in the semi-finals at the Scottish Cup for an incredible 64th time. It's Dundee United's 15th semi-final. The Arabs, as they are known, are so, so desperate to see off Celtic. And having already accounted for Rangers, it really would be a big, big scalp. Well, the original allocation for this semi-final was 50-50 for tickets, but Dundee United couldn't quite sell their allocation, so some of them went back to Celtic, who rarely have trouble selling theirs. Hence, a good few more Celtic fans inside Hampden Park today than there is Dundee United. Celtic probably making up about 70% of the crowd. A few months ago, Davy, this probably would have been seen as a formality for Celtic, but yeah. not now. No, not at all. You know, I think the fact that United have already beaten the other half of the old firm is a huge psychological boost. It's a, it's a huge mental barrier to come through. And they'll come here with a lot more belief and I think a lot more talent. I think since Alec uh, started weeding out some of the foreigners that were in that dressing room and bringing in a bit more grit, a bit more Scottish grit, dare I say, United haven't looked back. And they'll be up for the contest. I think they'll press the ball, they'll work Celtic and it'll be a typical Scottish Cup semi-final. The players of Celtic and Dundee United are about to follow in famous footsteps as they make their way onto the field of play, the field of dreams that is Hampden Park, a legendary venue in the footballing world. And I wonder who's going to be a Hampden hero today. There will be delight for some, despair for others, sheer joy or absolute agony, jubilation or desolation. It's a cup semi-final, it's time to stand up and be counted because a place in the 2001 Scottish Cup final is beckoning. The Celtic won all three of their league encounters with Dundee United this season and Henrik Larsson got the first goal in each. But he hasn't scored in the last three games. Is today the day he finally gets to beat Charlie Nicholas's record of 48 goals? Larson is reunited with Chris Sutton back from a three match ban in Kern after he was sent off in the League Cup final here and sent off by Hugh Dallas. I guess who's in charge today? Celtic felt Sutton's red card was rather harsh, but Hugh's never been one to be too bothered by that. He's going to be in charge of one of the big European games in the coming week but can't say which one yet. Former Ibrox starlet Charlie Miller faces an old foe in ten games for Rangers against Celtic. He was never on the losing side. Miller has played a key role in the transformation of Dundee United. I do believe he was a little upset to knock Rangers out in the last round, but he won't be quite so upset today. The Scottish Cup semi-final weekend has been overshadowed by the death of Rangers and Scotland legend Jim Baxter, who'd been suffering with cancer.
legend that the fans of Celtic and Dundee United had just showed what Jim Baxter was all about. One of the game's greats, gone, but never forgotten. Final Saturday, Hibbs made it through, beating Livingston 3 0 here. On semi final Sunday, Celtic and Dundee United do battle. It's the fight for the right to return here at the end of May to take on the Hybees. Will the final be an all green and white affair, or will tangerine dreams come true? Celtic looking for their third treble, a treble treble if you like the European Cup winning side did it in 1967 and again in 1969 can Martin O'Neill's team of 2001 etch their names in the history books Dundee United have other ideas and they are no longer the pushovers they were in the earlier part of the season Johan Yabi by the way is one of three players on the yellow card and if he gets another in this game, he would miss the final if Celtic make it. The other players treading very carefully are Ramon Vega and Jason DeVos, who heads that away. Dundee United will hassle and harry Celtic at every possible opportunity, but here's Paul Lambert, a Scottish Cup winner, is a 17-year-old with St Mirren in 1987, when his manager was Alex Smith, now in charge of Dundee United. It's a small, small world. Lubomir Marapcic will try again, but it was blocked by Danny Griffin, who missed the first half of the season through injury after joining from St Johnston. But he certainly made the most of things since coming into the team. Lachlan, his former club Kilmarnock, were beaten by Celtic here in the League Cup final almost a month ago. Didier Gap will be hoping to face his former club Hibs in the final. A rampaging run from Agat, not quite matched by the cross, but Griffin had to whack it behind for a corner. I think that's a danger, and if you allow this man to get turned and get running at you, he had a lot of time there to pick the ball up, steady himself, uh, and then set off towards the byline. United really have to try and get to him a bit quicker than they did there. Two minutes gone and a corner already for Celtic. The big boys from the back will be in there. Thompson whips it in. Dundee United deal with it. Celtic such a threat from those corners with Vega and Mialbi and Valharan around. And Sutton, of course, now back as well. Now by Valharan. A typical one compromising challenge there from uh, Valharan. I think to be fair, Jamie Buck and Salt coming. Managed to get himself out of the way, but I think we'll see a few of them in the early stages of this match in as the players put their markers down. The precious prize is up for grabs. A place in the final of the Tenant Scottish Cup. Hibbs await the winners of this one. Thompson. I split that one on to little avail. It'll be a goal kick. Alex Smith hoping to become the first manager to lead three different clubs to Scottish Cup glory. St Mirren in 87, Aberdeen in 1990. He's after a personal treble. Jenny McCunney lost out to Larson. But Jim Lachlan is covering a real strong central defensive partnership. Lachlan and DeVos. They really have shored things up for the Arabs. Neil Lennon, who joined Celtic in December, a latecomer to the scene, but he's been a massive influence on the way Celtic have gone about their business. And they have done big business this season. Thompson, Sutton, let it go, and <laughs> Lachlan just managed to stick a foot out. It's McCunney who's celebrating his 18th birthday today. He's come of age in more ways than one this season, having broken into the team.
birthday boy McKenney has been one of the discoveries of the season in fact and uh, there are one or two rumours that West Ham are having a look at him today here's Thompson Sutton away by Griffin but it's going to be picked up by Johan Mialbi Lambert Gatch hugging the touchline he'll be on his way again ready to give Buckingham a torrid time Easton's clearance will be retrieved by Alan Thompson now Lennon Moravchik and here's Lambert he's going to poke it into the path of Didier Agat it's ominous this for Dundee United Agat sends it back for Lambert and it was deflected for a corner uh, good build up by Celtic once again once again uh, Didier Agat uh, involved in spending an awful lot of space uh, down that side must be a concern even this early in the match uh, for Alex Smith. Moravchik wasting no time, but it's well taken by young Paul Gallagher, just 21 years of age. He's replaced Alan Combe as first choice. Lennon's header. Easton. Okay. Now Griffin. That one will go straight through to Robert Douglas, who was suspended for the League Cup final, or rather a cup tie for the League Cup final against Kilmarnock. They missed out in that game. Having played for Dundee in an earlier round. Lachlan's header. Sends it down for... David Hanna, who's facing his former club two and a half years at Celtic in between two spells with Dundee United. These two teams actually met a couple of years ago at this stage as well. Celtic won two there, of course. But uh, we talk about Alex Smith looking for a personal treble in the Scottish Cup. Martin O'Neill looking for the complete treble for Celtic. For the first time in 32 years. And he has certainly been the saviour of Celtic. Celtic hoping to reach the Scottish Cup final for the 49th time. Dundee United hoping to get there for the 8th time. Celtic having the better of the opening exchanges, but uh, perhaps that's not too surprising. The United holding firm. Yeah, I still think the problem is Celtic's two wide players here. In the middle of their time, they're getting to pick the ball up. Gallagher took his time then. Here's Lambert. Closed down by Charlie Miller. And the former Rangers man will relish a battle against Celtic for sure. McCunny. Ramon Vega will keep a check on that one. Quite going to go behind. And it has done now. But it was worth a try from Lilly. Ramon Vega has been a real star for Celtic. It's his 20th game for them, and they've yet to lose whilst he's been in that defence. Yeah, I have to say, he came here with a, what we heard was a damaged reputation after his time at Spurs, but he has been outstanding, not just in his own box, but uh, with his uh, physical presence in the opposition box as well. Griffin. Here is McCunny. And by Lilly. Away by Vega. Thompson. Jim Lachlan's got to be careful because Larson is lurking, but Lachlan steers it back to his goalkeeper. Griffin. McCunny. Craig Easton. Charlie Miller. Settled for the throw of Valharan. Charlie Miller missed a penalty against Hearts last week, but uh, I understand from Alex Smith that should the United get one today, he will take it. Easton. Just nudged out by Lennon. In fact, uh, the uh, free kick has been given. 
Yeah, I think they'll try and get uh, Charlie Miller on the ball as often as possible, Ian, but there is a price to be paid for doing that because it, it means that uh, both Easton on the right and Hannah on the left have to tuck in and play narrower, and that is leaving a gap in Thompson in acres of space in the wide areas because United's two fullbacks are reluctant to push right out on them for fear of leaving their two central defenders exposed. Eastern and now a chance for Miller to burst towards goal. Fine strike by Charlie Miller, rising rapidly. That yeah, that's exactly what they want uh, from this man. He's a bit of a luxury at times. He's not the best defender, but if you get him into this kind of situation, he can make things happen for you. Paul Lambert just couldn't get to him there. Mialbi stood his ground, and Miller needed no encouragement to get the effort away, and it wasn't far away. Slated into the path of Adam Thompson. Larson calling for it already. Thompson gives it back to Moravchik. Decent delivery. Away by DeVos. Thompson hasn't kept it in. It would be a Dundee United throw. Adam Thompson was suspended for the League Cup final here, so he's pretty new to the Hamden surroundings. Flipped on by Lilly, Thompson chasing, but Ramon Vega has that under control. Didier Gatt stepping in for Celtic. Lennon had a bit of a battle on his hands, and it's going to break rather nicely for Easton. Nobody over there, though, for Dundee United. Sutton, who's had to sit on the sidelines these past few weeks after being sent off here in the League Cup final. Didn't stop him celebrating, mind you, last weekend, that's for sure. Here's Ramon Vega, lifting it up for Sutton. DeVos is with him. Foul by Sutton. Thank you, Dallas, just giving him the message there again, Ian. He does well uh, in this situation, Sutton, because he has such good uh, body strength and he uses it so well, but uh, you can see that there was no attempt to play the ball. Dundee United's last Scottish Cup victory over Celtic came exactly 20 years ago today. 3-2 in a replay. Charlie Nicholas got both goals for Celtic, obviously scruffy little tappet. the big Belgian, Valharan, what a signing he's turned out to be. And to think he could have gone to Rangers, Dick Afrikaal was interested in him, but opted for Bert Conteman instead. Say no more. McCulley's throw. Moratchik, and he's going to look to release Henrik Larsson, and he might just do so, although the speedy Swede has a bit of a chase on. Lambert's arriving. Sutton in the box as well, but it's away by Lachlan. He stayed very calm and very composed then in the United. Alan Thompson, who was going nowhere at Aston Villa, but he's definitely going somewhere with Celtic. He lost his header, puts his teammate Lachlan under a bit of pressure, but. Now it's Miyabi is going to feel the heat because Derek Lilly tries to give him something to worry about, but Miyabi hasn't been too worried in recent times. Just remember, though, he will be if he gets a yellow card today. It will rule him out of the final. If Celtic get there. His fellow countryman Larson trying to get a corner of Lachlan, but it didn't quite happen that way. Charlie Miller, but Neil Lennon, well aware of what was happening, and then overran it, allowing McCunny to clear. Hannah charging in.
Stephen Thompson's cross. Miyabi held it up, but only temporarily so. And the free kick is given against Lily. And that's a good ball in by Stephen Thompson, which has Johan Miyabi on the back foot. Just trying to screen the ball there, Lily. I don't think he needs any encouragement to go down. Obviously looking for a penalty there. Dallas uh, having a look at it, made the right decision. Derek Lilly, who nearly joined Dundee United a good few years ago, but Leeds came in for him. Didn't really make an impact there and ended up at Oxford, and Dundee United eventually got their man about three or four years after they first tried to sign him. Bocken's clearance. Here is Lilly. Mialbi. DeVos, though, will get to that first. The Canadian international. Trying to go behind from that. You see Larson there uh, chasing the ball in, um, and he, he never gives it up, he really doesn't. He's a constant thorn in defender's flesh. Terrific attitude to the game. The RB has been penalised. O'Neill enjoyed great cup success with Leicester City, of course, in the League Cup in England. And he also won that competition as a player with Nottingham Forest. Of course, the uh, English FA Cup eluded him there, as it did Brian Clough. But the Scottish FA Cup is within his grasp. And the United, though, ready to give it their all in their efforts to make the big day at the end of May. There'll be no extra time today if it's a draw at the end of 90 minutes. It'll go to a replay which will take place here on Wednesday the 2nd of May. Vaharan. Thompson. Maracic. Didier Gatt. Poor old Jamie Buckin struggling to keep up with him. Maracic. Here's Paul Lambert. And the United quick to come out. But they'll be on the back foot again as Didier Gap prepares to try and deliver. Again, he's got the better of Buckin. Just flicked away by Lachlan, I think it was, but Thompson ready to send it back in. He does. And the United living dangerously as Lachlan knocked it over. Well done, John Laughlin. Once again, Celtic getting good service in from both sides of the pitch here, laterally from Thompson. And Jim Laughlin did well to get it over his own crossbar. Alan Thompson's corner. It's only cleared as far as Lennon. Lambert, such an intelligent player. An inspiring Celtic here. chance for the Belgian international, but he scuffed it over, Bahar. Yeah, he does well to turn the uh, DeVos here, just the spins, Jason DeVos, who gets a bit close, but he's got Vega at the back, the back post, had he looked up, you see Vega with his arms raised there, Jos Haran would have done well to score from that angle, should have pulled it back across. Celtic just starting to take uh, control of the game, eh? Lachlan, Thompson, it's drifted away from Stephen Thompson, who came into the side recently, and Jim Hamilton was forced out with an ankle problem. Hamilton back on the bench today, Thompson hanging in there, in the team. Well, Celtic, uh, I think, just starting to get a hold of the game now, Ian, 60-40. To, to their advantage in terms of possession, and they're just starting to settle into the game now, Celtic. And getting this man on the ball probably a bit too often in space for Alex Smith liking. Celtic, the Scottish Premier League champions, but a bit of a different story for Dundee United, who spent so much of the season in bottom spot. 
now second from bottom, four points clear of St Mirren, who they meet in their next league match live on Sky Sports a week tomorrow. Celtic next Sunday on Sky Sports will receive the championship trophy after their game against Hearts. Miller. Oh. He's been rather crudely taken out by Paul Lambert. Yeah, good footwork here from Charlie Miller. Paul Lambert uh, having a, I think a bit of a lecture there from Q Dallas. He'll be relieved to see the card staying in the, the referee's pocket. DeVos launches it. Stephen Thompson rising. With him, and that'll be a free kick. Jim Lachlan and Chris Sutton on collision course. Sutton certainly felt that. I mean, Jim Lachlan will be prepared to stand up to the physical battle, and I mean, Sutton will, will offer him that today. And uh, well, it's all over Sutton there. But he seems to save his best uh, for the old firm, Jim Lachlan, for now standing against them this season. Sutton's flip to Henrik Larsson, back to Chris Sutton. Now Didier again, patient progress from Celtic. Jamie Buckins thinking, oh, not again. This time, though, he managed to keep with him and did enough to force a gap to make a mess of his cross. I think at times, Ian, and this is an example of how his final ball does let him down. He does the hard bit, the hard bit's getting to the byline, the easy bit should be the delivery. It's something I think he has to work on, and should he get a good final ball, he is going to be one heck of a player. Celtic have won their last eight matches. Dundee United have only lost one of their last eight, mind you, so two of the form teams, really, in Scotland, in action in this semi-final. Robert Douglas... Last played at Hamden for Livingston against Queen's Park five years ago this week in front of 900 fans. A bit different today. Approaching the midway point of the first half, no goals. By this time yesterday, Hibs, of course, were in front in their semi-final against Livingston. They struck very early on. Went on to win 3 0. Alex McLeish and his men will be watching with interest to see who they'll be facing in the final. Lennon pushes it through to Chris Sutton. And what a wonderful challenge by DeVos to snuff it out. It's a terrific ball from Neil Lennon to release him in. As you say, a terrific uh, tackle from Jason DeVos. Lubomir Maravchik. Cross, Larson in there, but it's a comfortable catch for Paul Gallagher. The RB shouldn't be too troubled by that, though. He finds Lennon. A gap to Moravchik, and it came at him at a fair pace. Charlie Miller. Into the path of McCunney. Now Lachlan, Miller. Hannah to Thompson. He spins away from Johan Mialbi, but the Swede comes back into the equation. Good turn from Young Thompson. He's starting to get it uh, among the goals. Last couple of weeks he's managed to get a couple of goals, which uh, won't have done his confidence any harm. That may be the reason that uh, he was preferred to Jim Hamilton again today. Buggin. It's taken by Douglas, who used to play for Dundee United's city rivals. Didier Agat. Well, Jimmy Buggin showed great determination, but hang on. 
so did Didier Agat. <laughs> That's typical of him. I think he wanted it back. <laughs> Vegas header will drop out. The Easter feast of football on Sky Sports continues tomorrow with Blackburn Rovers looking to secure promotion to the Premiership. To take a step closer to that, they take on Huddersfield, 11.55 on Sky Sports 2 and Sky Sports Extra. And then it's the Merseyside Derby, Monday 5.30 on Sky Sports 1 with interactive coverage on Sky Sports Extra. It's going to be a goal kick, in fact. Alex Smith took over early season when Paul Sturrock resigned. He's also in charge of the Scottish under-21s. Paul Haggett here alongside him. And what a difference they have made to Dundee United. Although he'll know, having been around for quite a long time, that there's still plenty of work to be done. Didier again. Lambert opens up a little bit in front of him. Sutton. Larson had actually moved out wide. Away by Lachlan. Celtic can try again with Lubomir Moravchik. He's going to send it to Didier Gatt, which is not a bad idea. Larson delivers. Sutton's header! Off the crossbar from Chris Sutton. Celtic's so close to edging in front. Terrific effort from Sutton, he just drifted off Jim Lachlan there at the front post. Oh, Didier Gap is causing chaos again. He's looking to go all the way. He does take some stopping, but they have stopped him. McCunny. Well, the closest we've come to a goal in. Good delivery from Larson. Sutton up well there. And Paul Gallagher was beaten. Celtic have only failed to score in one of their 47 games this season. That was in a goal of straw at Hibs on a very blustery Edinburgh evening. The United, though, pretty solid defensively these days, although they clutched a bit of Aberdeen recently. Maratic looking to prize an opening. Oof, just poked away by Jason DeVos, and that was a handball by Chris Sutton. I think this is a problem, I mean, if you end up defending on top of your goalkeeper. You know, Sutton's more than capable of scoring from the penalty spot inwards, and they were right on top of Paul Gallagher there, United. Sutton has scored 14 goals for Celtic this season. He played in the English FA Cup semi-final last season for Chelsea, but got taken off at half-time against Newcastle and was replaced by... Tor Andre Flo, now his Glasgow rival. And Sutton didn't figure in the final. Chelsea. He will do for Celtic if they get there, that's for sure. Celtic won 4 1 at Stranraer in round three. Needed a replay to get past Dunfermline, which they won 4 1. And then one goal was enough to see off hearts in the quarter-finals. Dundee United haven't actually conceded a goal in the competition. 2-0 wins at Montrose and Motherwell, followed by a 1-0 victory over Rangers, which they will remember fondly for some time. Sutton's trying to release Larson, but he's going to get it himself here. And again, he looked for Larson, cut out by DeVos. The Dundee United central defenders certainly appear on top of their game and they need to be when they're up against the champions. Again. Again, he skins Jamie Bucket with ease. Oh, and Moravchik knocks it back. Larson tried the overhead kick. And the flag is up. 
Oh, terrific wide play again though from Didi Agati who is red hot today. And in this kind of form, Celtic really should be getting him the ball often and early. Good ball in this time. And I think it's Jamie McCunney who tucked in to give his centre-backs a bit of protection there. But once again, Celtic getting down the outside. And not surprisingly, you see that Celtic having the, the line share of the game now. Henrik Larsson did well to feed Thompson. Larsson struggling to get to the return, though. Jim Lachlan is that. Charlie Miller. Griffin finds Hannah. Miller, this is very neat from Dundee United, and Hannah now is leading this charge. Easton. Hannah, Lilly and Thompson all waiting in the box, all calling for it. And the LB taking no chances. A oh, well-constructed move, though. I mean, this time it was David Hanna's willingness to step off the middle and go and support his front two that caused the problem. Not a bad final ball in, well dealt with by Johan Mialbi, but uh, far more encouraging for United the way they constructed that move. Well, Jason DeVos and Jim Lockman will join the throng in the box. Danny Griffin delivers, didn't clear the first hurdle, Neil Lennon. Corner wasted somewhat by Griffin, but they'll try and take another route, although Lubomir Muratchik shows that he's not afraid to get stuck in. Celtic stringing together a magnificent move of their own. Sutton, blocked by Easton. Good advantage. Yes, a use of the hand, but he does letting the game flow. And it certainly was flowing in that little spell at both ends. Thompson. Cross to Didier Eckert. One of the bargain buyers of the season, perhaps of all time, really, at 50,000 from Hibs, where he was only on a short-term contract. Sutton looking to get him round the back, and he has done. Lawson! Oh, yes! It looked an almost impossible angle, but nothing is impossible for Henrik Larsson, who finally equals Charlie Nicholas's record of 48 goals in a season. Well, for starters, I didn't think Sutton was going to get the cross in because the boss was well-positioned. But how Larson managed to get across the front of Lachlan, how many times have we seen him do that this season? Lachlan thinks he's in control of the situation, Larson comes blindside, enough pace in the ball, all he has to do is change the angle on it, a magnificent finish, Paul Gallagher won't be happy at being beaten at his near post, but such was the pace on the header that you can't really blame him. And Celtic at last get the breakthrough that uh, you'd have to say they deserve so far. Be time to move over soon, Charlie. Henrik Larsson's 48 of the season. Derek Lilly trying to hit back, and he's got the corner. Henrik Larsson with another wonderful goal. Didn't really look on. Sutton's persistence and determination to ensure that he pulled it back paid off big time. Larson has always been quick, in fact, to acknowledge Sutton's contribution this season. Griffin's corner, away by Ramon Vega. Craig Easton's cross. Oh, Lachlan's up there. And Lilly! And the half volley was diverted away for the corner. And it just wouldn't uh, fall properly for him here. Celtic on top of the goalkeeper. Drops into a lovely area there, just couldn't, couldn't keep it down. Griffin sends it in. Away by Ramon Vega. And Larson is clipped by McCunny. And it's going to be a free kick. Yeah, not much doubt about that. It gives Celtic a chance to get pushed up. Camped on top of the goalkeeper. They're defending a couple of set pieces. But uh, gets them up the pitch again. And one 
both countries should realize that uh, there's only one winner in this debate. Charlie Miller getting a ticking off as well from Mr. Dallas. It's 1 0 to Celtic, the first goal Dundee United have conceded in the Scottish Cup this season. Sutton, the provider. Larson, the score. Larson has actually gone five games without scoring for Celtic in Sweden, which is a huge barren spell for him. Of Mialbi, easier said than done. Support available from DeVos and Lachlan. support, he wasn't going anywhere, desperately looking for a green and white jersey there as he was uh, handled by David Hannah. And uh, the former Celt, given the 
talking to by Hugh Dallas. Neil Lennon gets it back for Moravchik. Gives it back to the skillful Slovakian. Line. Bounces off. Bucket. Moratchin. Agat. Lennon. It's a good bit of play by Moravček, clearly taken late there by David Tanner. United's a problem at the moment, Ian, that they're back and top of the goalkeeper again, defending very deep, just can't get up at the moment. Alex Smith, vastly experienced. Knows what it takes to win the Scottish Cup. He's done it twice. And it's been a pretty confident camp this week in Dundee. Although they did realise they were in for a monumental task. Thompson's free kick away by Jason DeVos. Thompson to Mialbi. Here's Didier Gat. Sutton rising, but it's away by Lachlan. It's retrieved by Moravchik. He's Shaken off Craig Easton, teasing centre, well taken by Gallagher. That was Roman Vega who was attacking that front post there. It's a decent ball in again this time. Ravchik uh, does well there to spin, good ball in. Good, catch, good take there by uh, Paul Gallagher. And United seeking a response before half time to Henrik Larsson's 48th goal of the season. Lilly comes to meet it, and he's put Craig Easton in. Lilly's cross, leaving Thompson with a bit to do. He's not going to be outdone by Mialbi, but Mialbi took the sting out of his shot. Such a solid back three and a big back three for Celtic in Mialbi, Vega and Valharan. Derek Lilly leaves it for Charlie Miller. Turns away from Lennon. He'll need help from Jamie Buchan. header from Thompson. Griffin back to McCunney. Well, Haran's going to be on the end of that. Scooped up, though, by Miller. And that'll be a free kick. Lily barged over by Ramon Vega. Yeah, that's a cheap one to give away because Vega's well positioned here as the ball is played into the channel. In perfect position there. And so they're going to have to defend this one reasonably deeply. Danny Griffin, as usual, takes the free kicks, but his delivery is not quite up to a scratch today. Henrik Larsson looking to break away. He's not going to keep that in, though. Never really had much support bursting away with him. Just over a minute of normal time remaining in the first half. the one minute of added on time. Miller. Thompson will do his best to 
retrieve that before it skips away. He does make it, but he merely sets it up for Johan Mialbi, who followed him every step of the way. Lambert and Didier Agat is going to be in. Maratic is waiting in the box. Larson is arriving too. Larson lets it drop. Here's Thompson. Snuffed out by Griffin. We've had a lot of uh, goal mouth action in, but uh, I think Martin O'Neill will certainly be the happier of the two bosses down there. Easton able to take it off the toes of Thompson. Lennon. Okay. Sutton. Gat wanted it back. Hannah went with him. And Dundee United with a chance to go up the other end with Craig Easton. Stephen Thompson. I think Johan Miyabi is enjoying every minute of his battle with Thompson. looking for a second with seconds remaining in the first half Lambert lifts it towards Larson and DeVos had to steer it behind for a corner I wonder if there'll be time to take this uh, good ball by Paul Lambert uh, picks Larson out here has a look first of all Larson unselfish as usual trying to play it back across for Chris Sutton and well defended eventually by United who really can't afford to lose another one at this stage This will probably be the last action of the first half. Thompson with a wicked corner. And there goes the whistle. Henrik Larsson ended his goal drought. It didn't really look on for Chris Sutton, but somehow he managed to hook it back. And it didn't really look on for Larsson, but somehow he managed to steer it in. But then Celtic, well, it has been a tale of the unexpected from then this season. The thoughts of Charlie Nicholas and Jim McLean coming up with Jim. Next, at the break, it's Celtic 1, Dundee United 0. You can't play a good round all the time, but when you hit the spot, it's magic. Come on, keep going, speed. The USPGA Tour moves to Hilton Head, South Carolina for the World Con Classic. Among the top class field will be several Aussies, including Baddeley, Scott, and Allenby. There you go. Live and exclusive, the final round of the Worldcom Classic tomorrow morning from 5, Fox Sports. This week at 6 on Fox Sports Gold, classic Australian sporting moments. Monday, it's the best fight cards from the Jeff Fennec stable. Very impressive display. Tuesday, Australia wins the Tri-Nations. Has Walcott got it? Yes, he has. That's a vital, vital kick. Wednesday, the 2000 Superbikes from Fitline. So if the race is stopped, Troy Corsa will be declared the winner. And Thursday, Ian Healy's testimonial last year in Brisbane. Ah! Heels imitate teammates and farewell his fans. That's on Fox Sports Gold Monday to Thursday this week at 6 on Fox Sports. Another Fox Sports snapshot taken by Inside Sport. Food? Yeah, having a big win on the punt's pretty, pretty good. Oh, definitely hitting the game winner. Scoring a goal in front of 100,000 people. You're holding long putts. You never know when you're going to hold another long putt. If there is, I'd like to know about it. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. Winning. Four play. Well, I'll have to wait and find out. I haven't had sex yet, so I'll have to wait and find out. Yes. The sound of a V8. <laughs> 
That's for all the cars. <laughs> they always give me about that. <laughs> This Fox Sports snapshot was taken by Inside Sport. Hi, I'm Kate Fisher. Make a date to join me for a night of laughs with Saturday Night Live. 6.30 Saturdays, new arena. A new arena special, special presentation. It's where Hollywood's brightest stars come out to play. Hollywood, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, man. It still makes me laugh. How did I suddenly get so goddamn funny? <laughs> Hi, everybody. <laughs> Turn it. It's funny. It's funny because it's uh, bigger than a, <coughs> yeah, a normal hat. Remember, rule number one, you win with a grin. Which one of you is me here? You? I don't think so. <laughs> And I am the native man. Yeah, that was cool. Ew, no way, you're so not my type. Because I'm getting really pissed off. Hey, yo, it's all about what? You know, it's so cool to meet a guy who actually gets my sense of humor. Hey, Miss Ross! Saturday Night Live with Kate Fisher. 6.30 Saturday, New Arena. Sam Setu takes on Steve Dewey for the Australian middleweight title. Also featuring Nader Hampton and Australian heavyweight champion Carly Meehan. Live and exclusive, big time boxing, Friday night, 7.30, Fox Sports 2. Valentino Rossi was all smiles, beating McCoy and Biagi in a heated season opener. My goodness me, that's nearly a big accident. I'm number one, I think you said. Now the World Motorcycle Championships head to welcome in South Africa for the second round. Oh, he's off! Can McCoy go one better? And will the Japanese riders dominate the 250s and 125s on foreign soil? Exclusively live, round two of the World Motorcycle Championships next Sunday night at 7, Fox Sports. Soccer, the final rounds from the English Premier League, the UEFA Cup Final and the Scottish and English FA Cup Finals live. That's Fox Sports in May. More football to come on Sky Sports after we finish at Hamden. At 4.30, the next in the Sky Sports Year Series features 10 years of cup football. At 6.30, we're off to Spain for Real Mallorca against Las Palmas. And at 9, we look back on 10 years of football. That's all on Sky Sports 1 this Easter Sunday. OK, it's Sunday, it's Hamden, it's the second tenant Scottish Cup semi-final. Celtic Dundee United, Celtic through Henrik Larsson, are one goal to the good. Larsson now level with Charlie's goals record. No bookings in that first half. Unusually, hope it stays that way. Celtic have had the better of the first half though and deservedly go in a goal up. Jim McLean and Charlie Nichols are with me. And Jim, I think tame, you described, I heard you say it was tame at the end of the first half. And I think that sums it up, doesn't it? Well, so far, I think it's been very tame for uh, so much at stake. But uh, I, I really, honestly, don't usually make excuses for players. But I think the pitch is a disgrace yeah. for uh, your national stadium. I think if we've got a national stadium, we should have a pitch uh, that justifies us having a national stadium. But there's no doubt at all that Celtic deserve to uh, be one nothing up. But the goal that we lost was absolutely shocking defending. Uh, Jason DeVos has went out charging. Mm. Uh, but in my opinion, we're defending far too deep anyway. Hey, they started must... brightly enough, Jim. Charlie Miller had a goal there from distance. Yeah, but we must honestly uh, try and get more pressure on Celtic earlier. Because if you defend around your box, they've hit the bar and they've scored a, a magnificent goal from their point of view. Uh, that incident there, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a, a whole lot of Dundee United. But... Yeah. I would have wanting a penalty kick for that. Yeah. And it was a surprise, Phil. I, I didn't think it was a free kick against Lily. I didn't think it was a penalty either. I think that is the area. It's down the right-hand side that United have looked more prominent. I think they would li like to threaten a little bit more down the left or through central. The Celtic have, in a way, controlled the game in terms of the tempo of the match. is suitable to their midfield at the moment. I think the one problem that, that Dundee United have is here. Jamie Buchan has, has got side on time and time again to a gap. 
and there's no doubt he's either got his showman side or shepherd him down the line or get protection from Hannah. He's doing neither at the moment because of that. If a Gat's final ball is a little bit better, the way this cross from Larson was for Sutton, then this game could be over. Actually, strangely, Jim, you mentioned as long ago as last night you were talking about a Gat on Bucking, and that could be quite a duel. Life could be tough for Bucking, and it's proving that way. Yeah, to be completely honest, Jamie Bucking is playing out of position, and, and we've got to give the boy credit. Uh, for that, but uh, it's a big, big task he's got. Jim Patterson has had a broken leg uh, for the second time this season. So you've got no uh, real answer and, there, but what a goal that is, a Jim. Goal. That's it's a great fabulous, goal. isn't yeah. it? It's a fabulous goal. I mean, you can never give up. Defenders should never give up. The boss for me just thought he was going to see it out. Laughlin thought Larson had gone too far. The beauty of Larson, we've seen it for year after year now in Scotland, is that he gets across bodies. And when you do that as a striker, you got a little bit of good fortune, you get your awards, and it was a fabulous header. So as things stand, 1-0 to Celtic, thanks to Henrik Larsson. Hamden, this Sunday afternoon, and that is nice. Good for the Celtic fans, a nice tribute to Jim Baxter, the Rangers legend who died last night. Good for the fans. We'll be back in a minute. Monday morning at 5, live an NBA doubleheader. First to tip off, Minnesota and Utah. The pressure's on for the Timberwolves as they look to secure the last playoff berth in the Western Conference. Following on, the LA Lakers face Portland. Both sides in the playoffs as they aim for the highest placing they can in the Pacific Division. Live, an NBA doubleheader starts Monday morning at 5, Fox Sports. Another Fox Sports snapshot taken by Inside Sport. Never. No. Nah, not at all. Yes, most definitely. And enjoyed every minute of it. Oh, I'm not good enough to uh, get that fired up over the game, so one slipped out of my hand, but that's, that's about it. Many, many, many times. Name we shine you like. Yep, plenty of times. Absolutely. Uh, I think uh, in Fiji, Elton Flatley and I had a contest and I think I beat him by a metre. Felt like it many times, but um, actually throwing one? No. Still up in the tree. I, I couldn't be bothered going again it either. Uh, yeah, just a putter. Never. I was broken up. Yeah, I have occasionally. Another Fox Sports snapshot taken by Inside Sport. Get your ass kicked. Angel, coming soon to Fox 8. Friday morning, the UEFA Cup semi-finals live on Fox Sports 2. After ending on a even at the new Camp, Liverpool host Barcelona at Anfield. The UEFA Cup semi-final, 4.45 Friday morning, live on Fox Sports 2. Superbike Commentary Camp with Waz and Magoo at Phillip Island. Come on, Kev, you've got to practice the seagull. Ah! No louder! Ah! Now deeper! Ah! More urgency! Ah! I think you've got it! The training these guys go through to bring you the super bikes. Kev, what's this all about? Well, it's been a while, Oz. I'm just getting a feel for it again, mate. Oh, it's unbelievable. They're so serious about their work and go to great lengths <laughs> to get it right. Come on, Oz, get your heart rate up. Here comes Troy Corsa, leading them down the straight once again. Come on, Wazza, get your heart rate up. 
Next weekend, increase your beats per minute as Fox Sports revs it up for round three of the Superbike World Championship. All eyes will be on Troy Corsa to see if he can notch up two victories at home. Exclusively live, the Superbike World Championship from Phillip Island. Next weekend, Fox Sports. Next weekend, the English Premier League. of games from the English Premier League kick off at 8.30 Saturday night as Manchester United face local rivals Manchester City. The red half of Manchester know full well victory over their neighbours will give them their sixth Premiership title in eight, leaving City to sweat it out at the bottom with relegation another step closer. The Saturday night match at midnight and at 2.15 the North East Derby. Sunderland take on Geordie rivals Newcastle at the Stadium of Light. Next weekend the Manchester Derby, the Saturday night match and the North East Derby live on Fox Sports. With two big games coming your way on Easter Monday on Sky Sports from 11.55 on Sky Sports 2 and Sky Sports Extra. First Division football features Blackburn Rovers against Huddersfield. And from 5.30 on Sky Sports 1 and Sky Sports Extra, the Merseyside Derby. Everton against Liverpool. We're here at Hamden, it's 1-0 to Celtic, and this is a goal that separates the two sides this afternoon. And Jim, it was a peach, wasn't it? But you think De Vos should have shut down Sutton. Well, I honestly believe he sold himself there, and in my opinion, around the box, the most important thing is keep the, the forwards in front of you and don't let them get behind you. And to be honest, he's charged forward, in my opinion, and sold himself. It is a magnificent finish from Larson, and it's a, a good cross. Great header. OK, let's rejoin David Proven and Ian Crocker. Thank you, Jim. Well, the Dundee United faithful will be hoping that their team can come up with something to cheer about in the second half, which they are about to start. Hendrik Larson's goal separating the sides. His first goal since he was a Hamden Patrick hero in the League Cup final almost a month ago. What price another Henrik Hattrick today, I wonder. I'm sure Alex Smith has offered plenty of words of wisdom to his Dundee United players. He's put his faith in Scottish lads, and they have repaid that faith this season, but they're going to have to come up with one of their biggest 45 minutes of the season against the League Cup winners and League champions. It's going to be a corner. <laughs> Lachlan and DeVos both in the six-yard box. Oh dear, I think Danny Griffin stumbled as he went to send that in. He hasn't really got his deliveries right at all this afternoon. Well, he hasn't, and uh, he does strike a terrific dead ball as well, and so it's uh, two, at least two wasted opportunities from corners to put Celtic under pressure this afternoon. I might blame that on the uh, surface, I guess, which, yeah. uh, as Jim was saying during the break, is pretty woeful for the National Stadium. Well, even more so because it's, it's dry today, and it's... Uh, you know, it's, it's bobbling all over the place, and you think having spent 63 million quid in the stadium, they might get a, a decent pitch to go with it. And it's not really worthy of a national semi-final. Jamie Buchan will take this throw. His father, Martin, captain Aberdeen to the Scottish Cup and Manchester United to the English Cup in his time. Buchan lifts it in. Away by Valharan. Miller trying an alternative route via Jamie McCunney. McCunney and Miller, incidentally, will both be suspended for the United's crunch game at St Mirren a week tomorrow. And will be sorely missed. Bucket. Lilly. He's got away from the RB. Now, can Jamie Bucket get his cross in? Well, there's the answer to that. It was pretty poor. Smith has had a huge 
huge effect on Dundee United. He's done a good job there. In fact, uh, just after that game next Monday, against St Mirren, will have to fly out to take charge of the Scottish under-21s in Poland. Busy man. And as challenge on Mialbi, brings Celtic a free kick. They have won their last six Scottish Cup meetings with Dundee United, including two finals in the 80s. It's incredible, though, really, that Celtic haven't been to the Scottish Cup final since 1995. Pierre van Huydonk scored the winner against Airdrie then. That was their only triumph in this illustrious competition in the last 11 years. Didier Agat. Gap pulls it back, Larson let it go. Yeah, he's looking for the supporting midfield player there, Hernut Larson again, unselfish with the step over, but a great exchange to make the, the space down the, the right hand side. I bet Jamie Buckham was glad of his 15 minutes rest from Didier Agat during the interval. Lily to Thompson. He might be able to get his cross in here. Lily goes to ground. Oh, he left his foot in, and I think that might be the first yellow yeah. card of the game. Yeah, Hugh Dallas uh, had a decent look at that. That's Paul Lambert played it away. Derek Lilly just uh, left his studs in. You know, frustrating afternoon for Derek Lilly so far. He expected a lot more of him. To be fair, the front two haven't had a great deal of support from a, a midfield that uh, has become pretty detached from the, the strikers. A sore one for Paul Lambert, and we've seen him take quite a few of them over the last few weeks, both for Scotland and Celtic. Lambert in considerable agony, and uh, his national boss, Craig Brown, is here watching as well with that friendly in Poland coming up at the end of the month. Lambert will be okay though, ready to resume. Too much of Sutton. Jamie Buchan ready to take this throw. Five minutes of the second half play. On by Thompson to Lilly. Neil Lennon nips in. Lennon, a huge Celtic fan. It's quite refreshing in this day and age to see a man playing for the club he supported as a kid and loving every minute of it. I think he'd probably pay Celtic to uh, play for them, although, come to think of it, maybe not. Dundee United hoping to make this corner count, and you can see where all the turf uh, came up last time. When Danny Griffin tried it, this time it's Charlie Miller. Douglas got a punch on it. Comes back to Miller. Away by Ramon Vega. No foul on Larson, but Maratic has taken it up on Celtic's behalf anyway. And now a gap. Lambert making strides outside of him, but not quite the pass that was required. For Haran's header. Did he a gap? Larson losing out to Lachlan, McCunney giving it straight to Thompson. DeVos winning that duel with Chris Sutton. McCunney will get the goal kick off the goal scorer, Hendrik Larson. The sixth Scottish Cup goal this season. Yeah, I think Force United have lost in the competition as well, and he's well outside the front post here. You're really not expecting a striker to score from as far outside the front post, and somehow he managed to find the inside of the right-hand post. And it's uh, just a typical Larson strike, he's been doing that all season. His 48th goal coming in his 45th game of the season. 
Oh, that was a real nasty one. And they will be in urgent need of treatment. Ooh, felt oh, that that's one. a shocker. Yeah, that's a shocker. And Martin O'Neill knows it's a bad one. Yeah, you can feel that from up here. And let's uh, let's hope they're both okay. Typical commitment from Johan Mialbe. Both players looking at the ball there. That is a bad clash. David Hanna looks in real trouble down there as well. Martin O'Neill uh, had a perfect view of that too, and it really was a nasty one. Alex Smith. Concerned also David Hanna and Johan Mialbi. Neither were going to shirk their responsibility then, but it was a real nasty collision, and I think Hanna is probably worse off. Ouch. That was a bad one. Well, they both come out at Bethan, and I thought they might, Ian. Surprised there's, there's no blood there at all. It's, uh... So David Han is okay. He seemed to take a second prize. All the momentum was coming from Yalbi. I thought they just want to make sure he's okay before they allow him to continue. Fatal bang he took. Well, thankfully they do both seem to be okay. David Hanna facing his former club. They'll both have to trudge off to the touchline. Before they can come back on. Keith Harris has just given them the signal to return to the fray. Charlie Miller finds Hannah. Lily crowded out a little bit, but Charlie Miller has it. Thompson. Bucking unable to keep it in. And the United Scottish Cup winners just once in 1994 when they beat Rangers in the final. This year they beat Rangers in the quarter-final. It's getting the better of Celtic. Going to be asking too much of them. Still only the one goal in it. And there is a certain resilience about them at the moment in the United. Mind you, there's a fair bit about Celtic too. Bucket. Here is David Hanna, facing his former club. Neatly picks out McKinney. Craig Easton. Valharan sticking with him, and goal kick. As Valharan won the Dutch Cup last season with Roda. clinched their 37th league championship last week their 80th major honor overall still a bit behind rangers who have 100 major honors but uh, they won't be worrying too much about that at the moment this is most definitely their year now by narachik well, united having a, a bit more of the ball in this half in but uh, they're not really asking any questions of celtic at the back I'll be sorting that one out. Dundee United have hardly been free scoring this season, just 38 goals in all competitions, but looking for number 39 here, it's Lily. Came off of Ramon Vega. Away by Lennon. Last man. Brilliant. Terrific layoff from Larson. Typical of the man, and he's looking for the return, and Narancic has picked him out. Henrik Larsson, Chris Sutton nearby. Larsson! Oh, oh, just wide, but so nearly for this wonderful player. Deserved better in because it was a cushioned layoff deep in his own half that started the move. Who's on the end of the long ball? Larsson again, takes it onto his left side. Trying to find the inside of the left-hand post here is a fraction out. record nearly disappear completely then leveled by Larson in the first half with his 48 for the season although of course Charlie still maintains that he actually did score 49 himself shame no one else believes him <laughs> oh, 
Warren's long throw. Picked on by Sutton, two last. Charlie Miller. Who actually played under Martin O'Neill when he had a lone spell at Leicester. Played with Neil Lennon there as well, of course. Ramon Vega's clearance. Hannah charging in. the turn of the year, Dundee United have lost just twice in 13 games. Charlie Miller looking to go on a run, but blocked by Lennon. DeVos has to slide that back to Paul Gallagher, whose father, Jim, played in a Scottish Cup semi-final against Celtic in 1990. Celtic against Clydebank it was then, he was in goal for Clydebank who lost 2-0, Celtic went on to lose the final on penalties to Alex Smith's Aberdeen. Easton leaves it for Miller. Thompson trying to get in, promising this. Easton. And McCunny coming to trap back. Moravchik. Lambert to Lennon. Oops, that was asking for trouble. And Lilly couldn't quite get to grips with it. Yeah, they could just do with uh, getting their heads up a bit in the last 13 because uh, they've got a lot of good possession in a good area. The back line has pushed right up and they're now playing in an area that uh, they want to play in. The midfield are finding it a lot easier to support the front line. with Dundee United in 94. Went off to Celtic for a couple of years. Back now. And Lily. And he just caught Didier again then. He's got to be careful. He's on a yellow card. Just a reminder that uh, there are three players who've already picked up a yellow card in the course of the competition this season who if they got another one today would miss the final and those players are Ramon Vega, Johan Mialbi and Jason DeVos. Foul by Lachlan on Sutton gives Celtic a free kick in a rather promising position. Well they have Thompson with his left foot, Larson or Moravchik who would all Fancy having a go from here, even though it's a long way out. I think Thompson of the three in has the power here. Let's go from here, you're going to have to get a fair bit of pace on it. Larson's going to have a long run-up if he's going to hit it. It's not going to be him, it's going to be Alan Thompson. And in the end, it was much ado about nothing. Yeah, not his best thing. There's plenty of movement in the ball, but uh, just uh, too much uplift there. Paul Gallagher never troubled. Of course, you took a few uh, free kicks in your time. Yeah, as again, well. yeah. I've seen the black and white pictures. <laughs> Away by Lennon. Easton. Griffin. Wants to go back to Lachlan and he'll be forced to go back to Gallagher. Swedish under 21 international goalkeeper. Griffin beat Lennon to it. To the air cat. Ooh, Charlie Miller's going to nip in. It opens up a little bit. Miller for Bucken and Douglas. Flapping a little bit, but he got away with it, and Van Haren can bring it away. Oh, I can't believe they didn't have someone attacking that. It's a terrific ball hung up to the back post there. Good play by Charlie Miller initially to work the space on the left-hand side. You could do a bit more aggression like that from Charlie Miller. And Lilly at the back post should be getting himself in, in front of Van there. 
Sutton dispossessed by Griffin. Lilly held it up well. Miller. Bundled over. Oh, in fact, <laughs> well, he's given the free kick against Miller, presumably for handling it when he fell. Obviously, no foul for Miller. Ratchet. Lambert. Dundee United. Do manage to take it out through Bucket. But Lennon's going to cause them more problems. And this man certainly will, you would think. Did he air gap? Goodbye, Jamie Buchan again. And it's behind by DeVos for a corner. It's a wonderful week, but it's just a final ball again, Ian, but, uh, but he lacks at times. And that is scary pace to get himself beyond Buchan in the first place, but uh, the final ball didn't do something any, any favours. Thompson sends it in. Stephen Thompson can try and bring it away, but he was fouled by Lubomir Moravchik. Yeah, not much doubt about that. Tim Moravchik may feel it was worth giving that one away because uh, United were in a decent position to, to break their Celtic bodies up the pitch. Used 40 players throughout the course of the season. David Hanna, his cross blocked by Johan Mialbi. DeVos, one of only two non Scots in the starting 11. Here's Charlie Miller. Away to the birthday boy, 18 today, Jamie McCunney. Thompson, flick that on. And no free kick, even though Thompson is left floored. Henrik Larsson bursts away. Sutton, couldn't quite flick it back to Larsson. Did he air gat? And Vega playing it safe, and Tottenham fans watching probably thought they'd never hear that line. Here's David Hanna. Miller might be asking a bit too much of McCunny. Thompson can feed Larson. Moravchik. Moravchik lifting it into the box, but Jason DeVos is there. Points of Darlington. Celtic are uh, going to make a change shortly, which we'll see Jackie McDamara coming on. Thompson. David Hanna. Miller. Easton. He's uh, got the free kick. Oh, has he? I think he's gone the other way, in fact. I'm not sure that Hugh Dallison is assistant at a green in this one, the recovery tackle by Alan Thompson in the first place. I think uh, Craig Easton had a hold of his, his shots. And Celtic make the change. Lubomir Moravchik is the man coming off. And Jackie McNamara is going to come on. He missed the League Cup final here against Kilmarnock through suspension. His dad, Jackie, playing for Celtic and Tibbs. The two teams who could meet in the final, of course. But Moravchik's contribution to Celtic's cause today is over. As McNamara arrives on the scene there. Yeah, he hasn't really been in the game much, Lubomir Moravchik, and uh, really goes in 90 minutes these days, and uh, maybe an indication that Martin Neal is, is happy with what he has at the moment. 
He just wants to show that midfield up. Uh, Jackie McNamara sent a better player defensively than the Slovakian. We're at the midway point of the second half. Celtic have won the Scottish Cup more than any other team 30 times. Rangers just behind with 29. Larson gets the corner. Off Lachlan and Celtic will be hoping they can head into the comfort zone a little bit. Still a slender 1-0 lead even though they've had the better of the game overall. Although Dundee United have had their encouraging moments too. Damara's first contribution will be to take the corner. Agat. Ramon Vega. He has Agat still nearby and uh, going for the corner off Thompson, but it didn't quite work out. Goal kick. Martin O'Neill has had a simply sensational season his first year at Celtic. Signed a three-year contract and uh, relishing every moment of life in his particular part of Glasgow at the moment, despite uh, obvious rumours suggesting he might be off somewhere else. He's going to stick around for a while yet, that's for sure. Celtic man through and through. Now McCunney has done the United try to stir things up. His cross, though, will be met by Mialbi. His fellow countryman, Larson, looking to get it back from Sutton. Lockwood read it. Sutton, Hassel and And the beneficiary is Didier Agat. Here he goes again. Oh, he's just knocked it away. In fact, he's going to get a free kick. Well, Jim Lachlan reckons he threw himself if uh, Hugh Dallas uh, has given the free kick fair enough, but uh, he does well initially here, I got good upper body strength, good pace to get down the outside, but uh, certainly a theatrical dive at the end of it. Certainly Jim Lachlan thought it was a bit out of Hollywood from Agat. Thompson delivers. But it's a good catch for Paul Gallagher. Still more football to come this Easter weekend on Sky Sports. Blackburn looking for a place in the Premiership take on Huddersfield. 11.55 tomorrow on Sky Sports 2 and Sky Sports Extra. Interactive coverage there. Buckham couldn't quite keep it in. Also on Easter Monday, Everton against Liverpool. The Merseyside derby is from 5.30 and it's on Sky Sports 1. And for Sky Digital viewers, unique coverage on Sky Sports Extra. On Easter Sunday at Hampden Park, Celtic one up on Dundee United as they look for a place in the Tenant Scottish Cup final against another team who wear green and white, Ibs. Sutton, a cat. Here he goes again. Kenny Button will be glad to see the back of Didier Agat today. Straight up in the air by uh, Nora. Thompson and Vega grappling. Smith is going to make a change soon as Dundee United try to claw an equaliser. Jim Hamilton will be on shortly. Here's Lachlan. Lachlan. Launching it. Now on Vega. Showing off. Oh, 
dropped on by Larson to Sutton. McNamara, the uh, furthest man forward at the moment. Here's Lennon. Lambert. Not bad, is he? Paul Lambert. There's a chase on, and the goal kick is the outcome because uh, Lockwood played it off McNamara. And Dundee United can now make that change, which will see Craig Easton come off and Jim Hamilton, a winner with Hearts in 98, came on as a sub in the final against Rangers. He comes off. Yeah, I think we'll probably see Stephen Thompson now play wide, and he has played there uh, before for United. You can see Hamilton uh, link up with Derek Lilly. Hamilton has missed the last couple of games with an ankle injury. Alan Thompson and Larson takes over. Now McNamara delivers. Sutton was waiting in there, but Gallagher claimed it as his. And he wastes no time in seeking out Hamilton. Miyabi got there ahead of Thompson. And Valharan with a rather important interception too. Lachlan. ensuring that the throw would go Dundee United's way. McCunney seems to fancy a long Hamilton looking to flick it on, and he does! Oh, and it's been blocked wide for a corner. Uh, did well to win it in the first place, Jim Hamilton, and he's almost on the end of it as it falls here. Gets up well above Josh Bolhanan there. And Ramon Vega did just enough as Hamilton tried to pull the trigger there. Miller's corner and Douglas was fouled. Hugh Dallas a yard or so away then. And the keeper was taken out. Yeah, it couldn't have been any closer there. But uh, already Jim Hamilton doing exactly what Alex Smith would have asked of him. Good aggression there from United and Douglas uh, clearly taking while he's both his feet were off the ground and Hugh Dallas couldn't have been closer to call it but uh, the action there is will tell you that United are far from out of the scene and I think it's really now down to how much they want it I don't think they've played with the same conviction they showed against Rangers in the last round yes, yes. And they've got to find something with what 15 minutes left of this game here's David Hanna Hamilton mixing it up on by Lilly. It comes to Hamilton again. He certainly made a difference. Seeing plenty of the ball. Offside flag went up though against Stephen Thompson. Alex Smith hoping that his side can come up with something in the closing stages. The man who won the Scottish Cup with St Mirren in 1987 and with Aberdeen in 1990. Well, he's gone for Broke, it's a positive uh, change. They're playing with uh, three at the back at the moment, uh, Ian, with uh, McCunney, Lachlan and DeVos at the back. That's allowed them to, to play with the three up front as well. Hannah, Ramon Vega just flicks it back to Douglas. And be hoping to add to his rather impressive clean sheet record. 12 clean sheets in 23 games for Celtic, but he'll be the first to acknowledge the contribution of the men in front of him, especially the likes of Valharan, Vega and Mialbi. Celtic unbeaten since Rangers put five past them in November. Sutton. Larson could help this on to Thompson. 
He does. Thompson and Larson combining. Larson, oh, on a mission! Penalty! Hendrik Larson brought down by Griffin. I don't think they come much clearer. And Q Dallas is no more than two, three yards away. Got a tug at his jersey, first of all, Danny Griffin. And a clear clip there as Larson bought his way into the box. Did well to get goal side of Griffin in the first place on the left hand side, Larson. And he really couldn't afford to miss time the challenge, Danny Griffin. Henrik Larson taking it. Henrik Larson has the chance to break Charlie Nicholas's post war record of 48 goals in a season. Here comes Henrik. He's done it. 49 goals. He's different class. He's world class. He's Henrik Larson. And he's a Celtic record breaker. Well, he varies it. Sometimes he tries to tuck it inside either post, just goes for the power there. Knows that Paul Gallagher is liable to throw himself to either side. Straight down the middle. And having won the penalty himself, you can't say he didn't deserve to take it. Martin Neal knows that uh, Celtic have one foot in this season's cup final already. Well, he took his time, Henrik. Went a few games without scoring. But uh, this was the venue of one of his greatest contributions to Celtic when he scored a hat-trick in the League Cup final against Kilmarnock last month. He's on for another Hamden hat-trick now. And let's be honest, nobody would be too surprised if he got it. Thompson racing away. Just over ten minutes remaining. Celtic on the verge of reaching the final. Celtic against Hibbs would be an intriguing final. An enthralling clash and uh, a bit of a colour clash too. But don't give up on Dundee United just yet. And Douglas has to deal with that from Charlie Miller. That's a decent effort by Charlie Miller and given away that uh, the goal mouths are drying up and the way it's cut up here at Hamden. He might have taken an awkward bounce in front of Rob Douglas, but he dealt with it well. Larson. He's going for goal again. He's poked it through to McNamara. Celtic are heading for the Scottish Cup final. It's a goal for Jackie McNamara. And that is that. That's a terrific finish as well. Once again, Larson is unselfish because he could have gone for the hat trick here. Finds a bit of space, could have pulled the trigger there. Unselfishly played McNamara in back across Paul Gallagher. Goalkeeper wrong footed. And it's a fine finish from the midfielder. And that really settles this one beyond any doubt at all. Martin knows where he's going, he knows where he's heading. He's heading back here on the 26th of May to face Hibbs in the Scottish Cup final. Celtic fans are singing and dancing again. I'll tell you what, I bet they've had a few serious hangovers this week and they're going to have another one in the morning, you would think. The League Cup is in their hands, the League Championship trophy already won and it will be presented to them next week. And the treble still very much on. I think this was a tricky one in after the, the title win last weekend to, to get them back up for this would have been Martin Neal's job this week. The final look after itself, the semi-final is always a difficult one. And they're home and dry now. And the one game between them and the treble. Thompson has picked up Henrik Larson. Looking to get in again. Goes down again, but it's only a corner this time. Still making all the runs, Larson. Does well to get in behind Jason DeVos in the first place here. Larson awaits. He's pretty good in the air as well, remember. We'll be looking again on the end of Thompson's corner. Doesn't quite manage that, though. Also be encouraged by the fact that so far Vega and Mialbi have avoided bookings 
because yellow cards would have been so costly for them it would have ruled them out of the final. It would be foolish if they pick one up in the closing stages here now that they are home and dry. And the United are going to bring on David Partridge shortly. In place of Jamie McCulley. Celtic 2 considering changes in the closing stages. They are sitting pretty, very pretty, on a 3-0 lead. Neil Lennon. Sutton is about to make way for Tommy Johnson, gives it to Lambert. Lennon. to score. Ramon Vega. Up towards Sutton. Not the best of layoffs though from him. Griffin to Lilly. Here's Hamilton. But it's surely a lost cause now for Dundee United who are in need of a miracle. Griffin, whose challenge gave away the penalty. In the box it goes, though, and it is going to be one back for Dundee United. Lilly pops up, but surely they still have too much to do. Well, he did well, Lilly. The weight of the ball is everything here because it asks a question both of Douglas and Bilharan into the perfect area for Lilly. First touch was good enough to set up the finish. And at last, Derek Lilly gets a reward for what has been an otherwise frustrating afternoon here at Hampden. Great ball in behind. Oh, Derek Lilly giving Dundee United's faithful followers something to shout about. They always knew they were going to be up against it today, but uh, I have to say their fans have been great. They've still been singing all afternoon. So, David Partridge comes on for Jamie McCunney. And a double change for Celtic. Tom Boyd has come on for Johan Mialbi and Tommy Johnson who scored the title-clinching goal last weekend. Probably the worst title-clinching goal in history, mind you. Comes on for uh, Chris Sutton. The genial Geordie always plays the game with a smile on his face, but it's a face we're not likely to see at Celtic next season. He's had a contract and destined to leave the club. Five minutes remaining. Lambert. Celtic fans will be thinking that all that's left to do is for Henrik Larsson to complete another hand and hat trick. And David Partridge is going to get an immediate yellow card having just come on. Yeah, I see the shake of the head there from Hugh Dallas. Wasn't having any of the, the protests, and I think uh, quite rightly so. Saw one stood right on top of the right foot of Didi Agat there. David Partridge, but former West Ham defender, didn't really figure much in the first team though, down at the bowling ground, and that must rate as one of the quickest yellow cards of all time actually, he's only just come on the field. One minute seven seconds it took David Partridge to be booked, Here's Lennon. Lambert. No dead level in terms of the amount of ball either side has had, but uh, Celtic uh, have always been in control of this game, in from early on in the, the first half. Didier Agat. Agat uh, for once. Oh, I thought he wasn't going to get in, he then stumbled. A 
Nagata blocks the clearance. David Hanna cut out the supply line to McNamara, though. Jason DeVos clears. Tom Boyd. Sends it back to Robert Douglas, Celtic nearly there. Celtic fans hungry for success now. And quite hungry too for a Henrik Patrick, you would imagine. Here's McNamara. Lachlan comes across. Tegavakal won the treble in his first season in charge of Rangers. Martin O'Neill looking to follow suit in his first season in charge of Celtic. Thompson. Lennon. Another Celtic throw. As they see this one through, another job well done. It hasn't been a classic cup semi-final. I don't think Celtic are going to be too bothered about that. And Celtic fans are celebrating again. And that is becoming a familiar scenario this season. Now Ramon Vega quickly in on Jim Hamilton. Vega. Oh, he's got to be careful if he gets a card here for his retaliation. Remember, he's on a yellow card in this competition already. I think the card would have been out by now if he was going to get a yellow card. Bit of afters here, this collision here. Ah. Not a great deal in that. Thankfully, Hugh Dallas has kept the card in his pocket. No card for Vega, so he's free to play in the final. There will be three minutes of added on time at Hampden Park. Celtic can do little wrong this season. Your man of the match, David? Well, I think Didi Agar has provided some great uh, natural wood on the right-hand side, Ian. And as I said earlier, if, if he ever gets a really good final ball, he'll be a world-beater, but... Uh, once again, it's been Henrik Larsson's day. Scored two, made one. He continues to rewrite the history books, and uh, he's my tenants man of the match today. Henrik Larsson has finally broken that record. Set by Charlie Nicholas, 48 goals. And with five league games left and the Scottish Cup final, Certainly fancy him crashing through the 50 barrier and maybe even getting close to 60, who knows? A tremendous talent. And he seems rather keen to stay and play in Glasgow. His family very happy here. And there is talk of a long-term deal. He himself doesn't think he could play in the big leagues, but he's probably about the only man who doesn't think that. Douglas is going to get that back, a roundabout kind of way. Just a couple of minutes to go. A brave effort from Dundee United, but... There's always going to be a huge task for them. Better teams than them have tried to stop Celtic this season and failed. Celtic fans have another excuse to go out on the town in Glasgow tonight. And they were certainly out on the town for uh, quite a while last weekend, celebrating their championship success. Alex Smith was in the hunt for his third Scottish Cup with three different clubs. You could take some consolation from the fact that he too, like Martin O'Neill, has done a great job. There is a very different look to Dundee United these days and although they still have work to do in securing their top flight status they will fancy their chances of doing just that and they will turn their attentions towards a crunch game at St Mirren live on Sky Sports a week tomorrow Celtic well just one big party for them right now
Martin O'Neill checks his watch, but he needn't be too worried. Yeah, it's a great position to be in, in one game to go now for the treble. Can't get to a much clearer than that, you come here on the last day of the season. And it's uh, going to be Hibbs' turn to try and beat this Celtic side, and as you say, apart from uh, Rangers at Ibrox this season, no one else has done it in the league. And it's going to be Hibbs' turn to try and find a few answers. It's all over. Celtic are through to their 49th Scottish Cup final. Martin O'Neill remains on course for a tremendous treble. And once again, their inspiration was Henrik Larsson, now a Celtic record breaker. Hibs stand in their way at the end of May. Dundee United gave it a go, but there's no stopping Celtic just now. It just gets better and better for those who wear the hoops. Celtic and Hibs will go up for the cup here next month. League Cup winners already, League Champions already, and now they have the Scottish Cup in their sights. Quick word for the Dundee United fans who never gave up backing their team today, even though they knew they were up against it. Just one domestic defeat for Celtic all season. Such has been their complete and utter domination of the Scottish scene. And it wasn't so long ago that we were talking about Rangers dominating the Scottish scene. But it's move over Rangers, it's come in Celtic. Put on their way today by Chris Sutton, who somehow managed to pull that back. Henrik Larsson somehow managed to steer his header in. Larsson then brought down by Danny Griffin, allowing him to break Charlie Nicholas's record of 48 goals in a season. And Larsson, unselfish too, set up Jackie McNamara to really finish off Dundee United, who offered a little resistance after that when Derek Lilly popped up. But once again, it's Celtic's day. It is their season, although Hibs will look to have the last say in the season next month here. It's a Celtic Hips final, and it should be some final. It finishes on semi-final Sunday at Hampden Park. Celtic 3, Dundee United 1.